Well, hey guys, today we are going to be talking about 13 reasons why you have dull skin. Dull skin, frankly, is a bit of a nebulous concept, but most people know when they're dealing with dull skin because one day they wake up and they look at their face and it just does not look as healthy, as radiant, as glowy as it once did. When we're talking about the skin, you have the epidermis, that's the topmost layer. The epidermis shields you against DNA damage from environmental aggressors. It's also responsible for your body's water balance. The main cell type in the epidermis is the keratinocyte. Keratinocytes divide and grow in number and then they rapidly mature through four different layers of the epidermis, making their way to the topmost layer, which is called the stratum corneum. And at that point, they don't even look like cells anymore. They basically are just little waxy hard shells and with time those waxy hard shells shed. That is called desquamation. It's all part of your body's natural exfoliation process. Below the epidermis you have the dermis and the main cell type there is the fibroblast. Fibroblasts produce something called extracellular matrix which isn't a cell but rather all of this stuff that really gives your skin structural support including collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid. Fibroblasts are responsible for secreting collagen. They're responsible for producing things that hydrate the deeper layers of the skin and give your skin snap recoil elasticity. Now, given what I just told you about how the epidermis and the dermis work to maintain skin health, one reason why you may have dull skin is related to slowing down or irregular maturation of those keratinocytes in the epidermis. The maturation of skin cells throughout the epidermis to become corneocytes, it's pretty rapid and the natural turnover processes are going along, but with age and with certain underlying skin conditions, that process can slow down or maybe it's just irregular. So when that happens, you have a buildup of clumps of corneocytes that are not properly shedding. That leads to the appearance of dull skin because it's this dry stuff that's heaped up there. If you have a background of oiliness, that can make the skin look shiny, greasy, flaky in patches. So not only does that slow down with age, making you more prone to dull skin, but also certain underlying skin conditions can have an issue with the maturation process of the keratinocytes. For example, seborrheic dermatitis, which is an oily skin condition, there are patches where you get flakiness and that can leave the skin looking dull. And some people find that, especially when they get older, they benefit from incorporating a specific product into their routine that is aimed at exfoliating the skin to smooth out that layer of heaped up corneocytes. Whereas other people are able to keep things on track more consistently by regular cleansing and the use of a basic moisturizer. The reason these are helpful for the natural turnover process of the epidermis and improving skin radiance is because because they help with the moisture content of the top layers of the epidermis and that moisture content is really important for all the enzymes there to function properly and for the natural exfoliation processes to occur efficiently. Number two reason for dull skin is inadequate sleep. And yeah, we all know that we're supposed to be getting seven to nine hours of sleep a night, but that is just not realistic for a lot of people. And people struggle to get a solid night's sleep. But sleep is very important for the maintenance of the health of your skin. Sleep is also critical for your immune function. See, when you sleep, your skin barrier is repairing healing from damage from exposure to environmental stressors throughout the day. And when you don't have adequate sleep, that's not able to occur. And therefore you have skin that is a lot more dull in appearance. You're not gonna have radiant healthy skin if you are running on like five or fewer hours of sleep a night, or importantly, if your sleep is fragmented. Inadequate sleep is also associated with an increase in what's called transepidermal water loss. So your skin is gonna be dry and that's gonna lead to the appearance of dull Skin. See your healthcare provider. There are a lot of underlying sleep disorders. For example, sleep apnea. So don't sleep on seeing your healthcare provider about your sleep. You know, once your healthcare provider has ruled out an underlying medical cause, they're going to address sleep hygiene, which is the boring stuff that we all know we're supposed to be doing. You need to do things like making sure that the environment that you sleep in is cool, is dark, unwinding before you go to bed about an hour beforehand, turning off any devices because the light that the devices emit, the, the blue light, it can keep your brain awake much longer. Don't drink alcohol before going to bed and don't uh, 
uh, eat a large meal before going to bed. Because if you eat a large meal, your body's trying to digest that. And you also can get heartburn, which will wake you up. I try and limit the consumption of caffeinated beverages. I don't drink any caffeine usually <laughs> um, after 2 p.m. But a lot more people are drinking a lot of energy drinks and they have a very high amount of caffeine in them, like an, a ridiculous amount. If you're consuming those pre-workouts and energy drinks with a lot of caffeine in them, maybe reconsider that. Your sleep is so important. <laughs> I can't say that enough. The next reason has to do with your diet. You are eating a crap diet. <laughs> if you are subsisting off of super sugary, ultra processed, refined carbohydrates, it's gonna show up on your skin. Uh, you need to be eating a balanced diet that has fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, all of those things. Sure, you can have little Debbie snack cakes here and there. You're not gonna wrinkle up like a prune, but if that is the bulk of your diet, then you really need to reassess. What it's doing to your skin is causing the formation of advanced glycation end products. Advanced glycation end products are actually a major contributing factor to not only aging of the skin, but aging of the total body in general, like your heart, your arteries. They're compounds that are basically sugars glommed onto proteins and things, and they're naturally formed throughout your lifetime. It's a natural thing that accumulates as part of normal aging, but we can also take them in and they accumulate in our body. And one way we do that is by eating high glycemic load foods. White bread, cookies, crackers, packaged sweets, packaged snacks. With advanced glycation end products, the damage is, is happening in both the epidermis and the dermis. The sugars glom onto like collagen and elastin, it makes it very stiff, very rigid, and also generates a lot of free radicals that put your body over the edge in terms of what it can handle, and that leads to oxidative stress. Check out my video on how sugar ages your skin. I go into more detail there about the different types of foods and ways of preparing food to minimize the burden of advanced glycation end products, but it's something to be aware of. Make sure your diet has some whole foods in it. Fruits and vegetables as antioxidants are gonna help combat the negative effects of oxidative stress from all of the things that our body is exposed to. It'll make you much better equipped. Nothing will leave your skin looking dull like a tobacco habit. Smoking tobacco or smoking anything else for that matter is going to leave your skin dull because smoking leads to the depletion of the antioxidants in our skin that are necessary for fighting off oxidative stress that would otherwise damage our skin prematurely. And when we smoke, it eats up all of that. So our skin is basically left naked and afraid, if you will, in the elements. Smoking also accelerates the accumulation of exogenous advanced glycation end products. Again, those are the sugars glomming on to like proteins and things that lead to a cascade of more free radicals. So not only do you have the damage from the tobacco or the other stuff that you may be smoking, Smoking, but you also have advanced glycation end products forming and making your collagen stiff, weak, leading to wrinkles. And this destroys the underlying supportive framework of the skin, leaving it appearing dull and lifeless. Smoking also impairs circulation, so you don't get as good uh, blood flow to the skin to provide nourishing growth factors. Alcohol. If you drink excessive amounts of alcohol, it is going to show up on your face. You are going to have dull skin. Alcohol will lead to increase in transepidermal water loss. That's going to leave your skin looking dry and dull. It creates a lot of inflammation in the body. It is a toxin. Some people do not metabolize alcohol efficiently, so they are going to be more vulnerable to the effects of alcohol and its effects on your skin, but it definitely impacts everyone's skin and you should not be drinking more than one alcoholic beverage a day if you're a woman, no more than two a day if you're a man. And some nowadays argue that there's really no amount of safe alcohol that you can consume because there are so many adverse effects to your health from it. The other thing about alcohol is that it disrupts your sleep. You'll notice a theme throughout this video that a lot of things that can be leading to dull skin, they feed into other things that further lead to dull skin. For example, drinking too much alcohol gets in the way of a good night of sleep. You'll fall asleep fairly quickly, but you will wake up prematurely. So it's not good for your skin and your skin is going to look dull. It's not gonna be radiant, it's not going to be glowy. If you have any underlying skin problems like acne, atopic dermatitis, Drinking alcohol in excess is going to not be good for those because it is so inflammatory. Another thing about drinking alcohol and not getting good sleep feeds into the next reason why you may have dull skin, and that is stress. Stress is 
um, actually kind of a difficult thing to calibrate because your body does actually need a little bit of stress to function well. Uh, otherwise you become too weak. But too much stress is not good either. Too much psychological stress, stress from underlying illness. Stress leads to an increase in the hormone cortisol that further messes up your sleep. Cortisol not only messes up your sleep, but it gets in the way of healthy collagen production and that is going to leave your skin dull. The other thing about increases in cortisol is that they um, prevent growth hormone from stimulating healthy collagen. People who are stressed out, they do tend to have more water loss from the skin as well. I already told you that if your skin is dull, you may have a crappy diet, but if your skin is dull, you may also be lacking in nutrients. Just because people are not underweight does not mean that they are necessarily getting good amounts of all nutrients. Vitamins and minerals are really important for the function of the enzymes in your skin, including enzymes that are necessary for fighting off oxidative stress, as well as enzymes necessary to build strong, healthy collagen and to allow for efficient turnover of that epidermis so that the skin is smooth and it's acting happy, keeping everybody in check, the water in, the irritants and pathogens out. But when you are not getting good nutrition, maybe you are, again, either subsisting off of junk food or you're just not eating enough, whatever the situation may be. Vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, they are critical for healthy skin. So if you're someone who does not eat a varied diet, you subsist off of like macaroni and cheese and pizza and chicken nuggets, probably not going to be correlated with your best radiant glowy skin self. And again, it's not all about a vanity metric. Skin is just kind of telling you, hey, what's going on with the rest of you? Maybe your skin is dull simply because it's dry, it's not retaining moisture well. And there are multiple reasons this may be happening for you. One is maybe you're in an environment that the humidity has dropped. Maybe it's getting into the colder months, or you've been in an airplane on a long flight, your skin often looks dull, right? When you travel and you're going in and out, maybe you're not sleeping well uh, and, and your skin becomes dull, loses more water. Or maybe you have an underlying skin condition where you're prone to dryness. You know, maybe you have skin barrier issues like atopic dermatitis, you lose more water, the skin can appear dull and dry. Simple things you can do to remedy that, Getting a humidifier in the bedroom to run at night can definitely help a lot with the moisture content in your skin and also using moisturizers. Unprotected sun exposure. It doesn't matter what your skin tone is, uh, super pale or super deeply pigmented skin. Unprotected sun exposure definitely can leave your skin quite dull because those UVA rays that come from the sun, they penetrate really deeply to damage the collagen, the supportive framework, and in deeper skin tones, it can also lead to hyperpigmentation, which can leave the skin looking dull as well. UVA rays not only damage collagen, but they also contribute to advanced glycation end products. Uh, glycation is enhanced through UVA exposure. So protecting your skin from the sun is important. A manifestation of sun damage is the appearance of dull, sallow skin. Next is you are just too sedentary. Exercise is very important. It helps with lowering stress hormones. It helps with your immune system so that it'll function better to get rid of damaged cells and damaged collagen so that you'll have healthier skin. Exercise also improves blood flow to the skin, which helps with delivering growth factors and nutrients necessary for skin healing and recovery. The next dull skin culprit pollution. Pollution is a major problem for a variety of facets of our health, including our skin. Pollutants, they lead to peroxidation of lipids in the top layer of your skin, the top layers of the epidermis. And it's not, the damage is not just confined there though. It generates a cascade of inflammatory mediators and that damages collagen in the deeper layers of the skin, creates a lot of inflammation, damages DNA, proteins in your skin, and can leave the skin dull, prone to irritation. Skincare products can only do so much when it comes to addressing pollution. Sunscreen will help in protecting against UV rays, which are not pollution, but UV rays from the sun. And that's helpful because the combination of UV plus pollution, they exist a synergy together where their effects together are even worse than either alone. So protecting your skin from the sun is obviously important. Uh, there is some hope that antioxidants applied topically may help uh, reduce oxidative stress in the skin upon, you know, related to pollution. But 
Anti antioxidants are cosmetic ingredients. There's a lot more research that is needed on the optimal dose, as well as the best antioxidants for uh, addressing the damaging effects of pollution in the skin. Maybe you live somewhere that's windy. Comment below if you live in Chicago, the windy city. Wind can actually leave your skin quite dull because it's uh, actually kind of drying on the skin, leads to more water loss. And so check out my video on, I have a video talking about wind burn, winter skin. Gosh, do we already have to be thinking about winter skincare? But yes, if you live somewhere windy, you're just exposed to the elements a lot. It definitely can take a toll on the skin. Staying really consistent with your skincare routine and using barrier creams and um, protective measures with just fabrics and things to protect the skin definitely can help save your skin and help it stay looking radiant and glowy despite the elements. What do we love to blame all of our problems in life on? Our hormones. Yes, hormones can affect your skin, of course, and leave it dull. Women experience a lot of changes in hormones related to the menstrual cycle and during menopause that can affect the skin and leave it dull. With menopause, estrogen levels decline, and with that comes a decrease in collagen, a decline in collagen, as well as just an overall decreased ability of the skin to retain moisture, and that can leave it appearing dull and dry. Women experience cyclical changes in the hormones with the menstrual cycle that also can leave the skin oilier and or more prone to water loss at different times of the cycle uh, and redness and sensitivity. But it's not just the sex hormones, there's also a thyroid hormone. Check out my video as a side note on skin signs of low thyroid. I go over all the findings there. All right, you guys, those are 13 reasons why you have dull skin. Now, your skin is a complex organ. All of these different culprits that I've outlined here, they can feed on one another. Stress, poor sleep, poor diet, consuming alcohol in excess, smoking. These are all lifestyle factors. Uh, don't require you to buy an expensive skincare serum or product, but really just rethink some things that maybe you could improve upon in your life as best you can. So dull skin is not just a marketing concept to sell you more products. It, it's a real issue. Now, skincare products that aim to address the appearance of dull skin, they're often marketed as skin brightening. On the end slate, I'm going to put my recent video all about skin brightening versus skin lightening. So you're going to want to check that one out next. But if you guys like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.